Yasuki Pros and hello Eurovision fans. We are the Do Spot, the channel that awards you 12 points. In today's video, we will be talking about Cyprus's 2021 entry, Elena Sagrinu, and give our reactions basically. I'm Khan from Germany and I'm joined by Andrzej from Poland and Svenja from Switzerland. And yeah, so as you know, Eurovision 2020 was cancelled due to the coronavirus pandemic and this year the contest will take place for sure and many countries decided to do carryovers. I mean, they invited their singers to take part once again in 2021 contest, but Cyprus was not one of these countries and they Actually, they were supposed to be represented by Sandro and running, but due to the negative response from the fans, they decided to go with another artist, and she is Elena Sagrino. So, guys, what do you think about Sandro and last year's entry? I think uh, that uh, maybe it is a good decision that uh, there is a change in artist because uh, he maybe don't didn't want to be again because uh, he had to have a song in a different style than he is used to and uh, it was out of his comfort zone uh, that's why the maybe uh, fans didn't like the song and Svenja, what do you think did you like the entry last year I liked it. At first, I was kind of not so sure about it, but when I heard it more often, I really liked it. And in my personal opinion, I would like to have every artist returning who wants, of course, uh, because I just think that every artist uh, who was selected would have to have the, uh, the time to shine and uh, to enter the stage because, yeah, I mean, the songs of 2020 are known by Eurovision fans, but not by the public who would what would have watched uh, the contest in television, but not the songs just like this. Uh, but I think, yeah, I mean, in the end, uh, it was the choice of the country. And if Cyprus choose uh, a new contestant, uh, yeah, we have to accept that. And uh, maybe they will have a better result in the end. I mean, we can't know eventually, but... I think uh, the replacement of Sandro was rather than Sandro's, the decision of the public broadcaster, actually, because, you know, they uh, published an announcement and they said that they wanted to go with a, you know, well-known artist next year. And I think this is a right decision. I mean, I'm being quite controversial right now. I think Sandro, Sandro's style was not really eurovision -y, if that makes sense. I mean, the song was a generic EDM song, and I think he had the song, let's say, the song didn't have a lot of things to offer to Eurovision. So after one year, I'm glad that they returned back to their old formula with a well-known artist and a pop banger. I mean, we don't know what kind of song this year's song will be, but there are some predictions in when you look at the singer's background and her style. I mean, this will probably be the similar formula as they used in uh, 2018 and 2019 with Eleni Forever and Tamta. So, I mean, this is my favorite genre. It's Eurovision, ethno bops, and even bops. So. I'm glad, you know, I don't, I prefer this kind of pop to EDM. So I think I'm really hyped for Cyprus and I can't wait to find out what they will bring to the contest. So let's talk a little bit about Elena Sagrino and who is she actually? She was born in 1994 in Athens, Greece, and with a quick math, she is now 26 years old. She has a very successful career actually, and she's been climbing the stairs upwards all the time. When she was 14, she made her breakthrough with her participation in Greece Got Talent, where she reached the semi-finals. After a few years, she joined the group Otherview, and 
she took part in most of their hits uh, in the group. And after five successful years, she decided to launch a career in 2018. Maybe this was the beginning of her Eurovision journey because Dimitris Kontopoulos was behind her debut single, Pame Aptin Archi, which translates to English as Let's Go From The Start. And many songs followed this one, with the most recent ones being Parame Agalia with Mike and Amore. You guys want to add something about Dimitris Kontopoulos because he's a familiar name to Eurovision fans. Uh, Dimitris uh, Kantopoulos, uh, also known uh, that he is in a dream team of Stefania that will be in Eurovision 2021. And also, he was part of the dream team while working with Sergei Lazarev. And not surprisingly, her popularity rose, 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 but not only as a performer, but also as a TV personality as she co-presented the Voice of Greece in 2016 and 2017, and also was a coach in the TV music show Just the Two of Us. So let's come to the song now, actually. We talked about her career and background, and this year we know that her song is called El Diablo, The Devil in Spanish. And what do we know else about the song? Well, we know about some songwriters. For example, Laurel Barker uh, will be one of the songwriters. Uh, we all know her probably uh, because she was co-writing uh, the Swiss entry for 2019, She Got Me, uh, which ended in a very great place eventually. Um, but she also had uh, wrote, written songs for other great stars, like for example, Hannah Firm who we all know because she was participating in Melody Festivalen, uh, the Swedish uh, and national final. Uh, but she also had many uh, number one hits, which she was writing for some singers. So uh, she's actually quite successful. Uh, she's Canadian. And she is actually the only female songwriter who has three songs uh, compete in the Eurovision final that makes her quite successful in the Eurovision Song Contest as a songwriter. But the two songs that she also taken part in the writing process were Sisters, Sisters, Sister from Germany and Michael Wright Bigger Than Us. These two songs finished actually in bottom three of the grand final. So... I mean, she got some interesting results at Eurovision, and also, I think it's interesting that you didn't mention Zips and Stones as well, because she also wrote that song as well. That's from true. Switzerland. We also have in the songwriting team a he has worked with some worlds like J Lo. Nicole Scherzinger, Nicki Minaj, etc., etc., and the list goes on and on. So he's a really uh, successful uh, songwriter, and he'll definitely bring some quality to this entry as well. And we have also Thomas Stengart from Den Denmark, I suppose. He wrote the winning song of 2013, Only Teardrops by Emily DeForest, and also You Let Me Walk Alone by Michael Schulte in 2018. That was also a big success for Germany after lots of last places. We also have Oxa in the writing songwriting team. And Oxa is actually a really interesting personality. I think she is a dancer, but she auditioned for The Voice of Germany and sang Netta Toy. She has some sass and, you know, it's really exciting to see her in this team, personally. And Martin Dietman is the artistic director of the Elena song. And uh, he was supposed to be Sandra's as well this year. But he's known for uh, many Eurovision uh, uh, jobs, like he was a part of... Uh, 
Eurovision Song Contest. He made few like stages uh, in 2014. He was directing uh, Conchita Wurst's performance. So I think uh, he will make a good, great job. And uh, what I see overall beside him that Cyprus, although takes uh, Greece a uh, known artist, also like brings to the team people who are from Germany. Men and we can see that. Yes, we saw that in the last couple of years. Uh, Tantos dancers were from Sweden, I think, and they worked with Sasha Jean Baptiste the legendary um, choreographer, I think. And it's interesting to see her uh, missing in this year's lineup, actually. They, I think, after Tomsa's disappointing result, they wanted to go with another person. So, um, and lastly, guys, what do you expect from the song? Oh, I actually just hope that it's not going to be like Fuego 2.0 because I really liked Fuego, but uh, I think Replay was already quite similar to Fuego, so I think we need something else, something kind of new. Of course, Running from Sandra was completely different, but that doesn't mean that we now should go back to like something extremely similar. But what I've heard from her, her other songs were quite different sometimes and quite exciting. So I think it could be something like, of course, somehow similar because it's going to be a bop, as you said before, and it's going to be exciting. It's going to be more powerful, but I hope it's going to be a bit different and a bit, yeah, just another style kind of, but I, I think it's going to be exciting. What I first thought of Elena was uh, Eleni, <laughs> and I think it is mm, with a Spanish flavor in it, uh, from yeah. just energetic vibe. I totally agree with you. I think it has already some similarities with Fuego, um, but personally, I wouldn't have a problem with it. I mean, it's as I said my favorite genre at Eurovision. And Cyprus is really good at it, so we see it. Uh, we saw that uh, in Fuego and Replay. By the way, Replay is like one of my all-time favorites. And you know, last year they tried something different, and I appreciate that, but it didn't work out for me. Uh, and it wouldn't have actually done successfully at Eurovision as well. I mean, it was, it was like. Uh, nearly a sure non-qualifier. So I think it's good to see that Cyprus returns to what they do really successfully. And this will really increase their chances of success at Eurovision. And they are really looking for a win. Like they don't want to place in top five and top ten. These are just like, you know, little aims now. After finishing second, they eyed for the victory. And this could be the right formula. So guys, today we reacted to Elena Sagrinu, who will represent Cyprus at Eurovision 2021 in Rotterdam. Uh, we just took a look at her career and background, and also the few details that were uh, shared with us about the entry. The songwriters will, are really promising, and this could be the year of Cyprus, maybe. So. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. We also have an Instagram account. Please follow us there as well, because we are sharing some Eurovision-related content there daily. And also hit that notification bell to get reminded by our new videos. So now it's time for the cringy outro time. And 12 points go to you. Bye. 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 Again? I uh, was saying that when you uploaded the photo, I thought uh, she's uh, 
Oh. Like, I see him, not she. Not she. Uh, yeah. And I was like, okay. And then I read, read hmm, it is Elena. Okay, it is a girl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she has a really different style, actually. Um, I think she had brown, long hair um, in the near past. I mean, uh, when she was in other view and also starting her solo career. But right now she has, I think, pink short hair, which reminded me of Rihanna. Uh, in, I mean, Rihanna had also that kind of hair. So she's really versatile with her look. And she also has the potential to be the fashion icon of Eurovision 2021, I think. Hmm. <laughs> Voting for Cyprus and uh, Cyprus for Greece, <laughs> obviously. Yeah. Uh, but Elena is uh, really good, and I have found information that she really performed in both countries. Mm-hmm. It's gonna get even worse that they are separated in the semi-finals <laughs> when she's yeah. known in both countries. So it's gonna be hard <laughs> that uh, Greece won't be able to vote for them. <laughs> I hope it will be better staging than Tamta because I voted for Tamta in Barbara Deck's uh, contest <laughs> because the song, I didn't like it. But I agree with you that Tamta's staging was a little bit underwhelming and I mean she was lacking energy, you know, that didn't uh. come across and that was, a, that was a big issue and that's why I mean she got only 30 something that like that points from televoting which is like mind-blowing actually if you like consider the genre of the song that's really televoting appealing 